rigid a schedule as you were at the hospital, but you must do as the nurse tells you. Well, I hope this time you've got a nurse who knows how to mix a good martini. <laughs> you behave yourself, young lady, and just relax. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be looking for you. I'll see the doctor out. I'm so glad you made her come home, doctor. Marcia, you're going to have to take very good care of her. Condition's very serious, more serious than the last time. She will be all right. Good morning, Tom. Marcia, how's Valerie? Resting. I'll bet she's glad to be home again, eh? May I go up? No, she shouldn't be disturbed. She's not exactly over it. I was about to tell Marcia, Jim. She hasn't very much longer to live. No. What are you saying? Matter of months, perhaps a year. But it, it can't be. It can't. Heart trouble. But she's so young. Why, only last week. She was well, gay, shopping, planning a party. Her party days are over. She'll have to give up her social life with her high living friends. Not keep late hours. She should get away from here and rest. Does she know? Well, I believe she should be told. Jim, I usually leave decisions like this up to the family. But Valerie hasn't a relative in the world. What do you think, Marcia? Only oh, your secretary companion, aren't you? True. But ever since her husband's death, you've been like a sister to her. I don't think she should be told. I, the very thought of what happens to all the enterprises. It's not that I'm unfeeling, but I'm chairman of the board. She hasn't even made a will. Do you realize what this will mean downtown? Confusion, even a panic. Oh, business isn't important now. Marsha's right, Jim. We can't tell her. And Mr. Bancroft left everything so orderly. Now he's entitled to every bit of happiness that she can have right now, in whatever time she has left. Well, I understand, but why can't I see any of my friends, have any fun? Am I in prison, or do I have a contagious disease or something? Well, if you do, it's very becoming. Uh-oh, here we go again. Hello? No, Alec, you can't come. No, no parties. No, not even for a moment. Goodbye. Marsha, how can you be so mean to the boy? Hello? No, she can't come to the phone right now. Let's get to the point. When and where are you going away for a rest? Well, as long as we're going, we might as well go immediately. That decides the when. Now, uh, all we've got to do is decide the where. No. No, but I'll tell her. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, I promise. Goodbye. Hmm, it's a gift from Bill. Oh. Who was it, Marcia? Harry Robbins. Harry Robbins? I thought he went to California. Well, he did, but he came back. He couldn't stand the sunshine. California. Sunshine. Well, how about California? Oh, that's fine. I never did see enough of California. Just breeze through on my honeymoon. Very good. And you know, I have a friend in Los Angeles, a Dr. Peter Kirk. He was a student of mine. You'll find him... Yeah, a doctor. Well, yes, I'll let him know that you're coming. And so he can keep an eye on me? Exactly. Oh. And by the way, don't let any of your friends know where you're going.
Well, there you are. So this is California, huh? How can you tell? Well, actually, when conditions are right, the view is very stimulating. I'm due at the hospital now. And remember the password. Relaxation. You're acting the doctor again. Okay, okay. Tomorrow I promise to forget my Hippocratic oath and show you around. Uh, places like the uh, Huntington Library? Yes, and uh, La Brea Tar Pits. Oh, fascinating place, the La Brea Tar Pits. And then, of course, there's always uh, Griffith Park. Well, how about Hollywood? Isn't there any nightlife there? Now, 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 oh, Mrs. Bancroft. I know, I know. I'm supposed to be convalescing. Mrs. Bancroft, you've got to be on your best behavior and get to bed early. <laughs> well, let's say we do the town tomorrow night after the sightseeing. We can have an early dinner and then the theater, but uh, no nightclubs. Sounds all right. Fine, I'll see you both in the morning then about 10.30. Thank you for picking us up at the airport. You're very welcome. Oh, and uh, before I forget, you can always reach me at either of these numbers. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Hmm. You know something? I'm tired. I think I'll lie down. Good idea. There's no reason for you to sit around here. Why don't you go down to the lobby, stroll around, look the place over? Oh, I don't think I ought to leave you. Well, silly, I can have you paged if I need you. Here. Break this in for me, huh? And let's make you real glamorous, huh? Here. Jordan, I didn't get a chance to talk to you alone. You understand, of course, that Mrs. Bancroft isn't to know the extent of her illness. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I'm not as efficient as all that, Doctor. Why, yes, I'm looking forward to it. Grand. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, Christy and Don Durval. I believe this is your area. Oh, where did I lose it? I don't know. Right here. I was staring at you. I can't think when a man stares proves so fortunate. <laughs> In that case, I'll claim a reward. Will you join me for a drink? Here's mine. May I join you? Waiter. Yes, sir. I'll have the same, please. Easy on the vermouth. Yes, sir. Where are you from? New York. I'm a Chicagoan by birth, but I've spent a lot of time in Central America. My mother's American blood camouflages with my Spanish ancestors. I guess that makes me... Half an all-American. <laughs> I guess that's about right. Have you been here long? I divide my time between here and the Midwest. Business. Oh. Oh, I neglected to introduce myself. My name is Ricardo de Villa. They call me Rick. Well, how do you do? My name is Marcia. Oh, thank you. Well, here's to diamond Dear. rings and beautiful New Yorkers. It's 
nearly dinner time. We have some wonderful places here. Scandias, the rooms. I'm afraid I'll have to take a rain check. My traveling companion's a bit under the weather. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, you planned a reward for the earring. I'd like to honor it. Thank you. Good night, Mr. DeVille. Hasta la vista. Hi, Rick. Shooting for the stars, aren't you? What do you mean? Don't you know? She's the wealthy Mrs. Bancroft of New York. Really? Well, if I shoot, I may as well aim high. Obviously, she has charms other than her wealth. Nonsense. I met her quite by accident. And you. You shouldn't be here now. It's okay. Don's in the dressing room. Buy me a drink. I don't think you better. Why? Is she coming back? Fritzy, he's looking for you. Tonight? He won't let me out of his sight. Tomorrow. Tomorrow at 10. Well, there you are, darling. I was looking all over for you. Sit down, Don. Next I'll buy to just pour a drink. It's unusual for him to be giving instead of taking. <laughs> Come on, Don. You don't mean that. Sit down and have a drink with us. Waiter. Chair, please. Good morning, Mrs. Bancroft. <gasps> what? This is Mrs. Bancroft, Mr. DeVia. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. How do you do? I'm Marcia Jordan. However did you get the idea I was Mrs. Bancroft? A mistaken gremlin told me. <laughs> oh, there's Dr. Kirk. Excuse me. Come on, Bowie. You can't possibly be the friend Miss Jordan mentioned. Why not? Well, I understood you were ill from the trip. Oh, I'm famous for quick recovery. May I put my car and myself at your disposal? Oh, thank you. Someone's coming to pick us up. Then why not dine with me this evening? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got sort of a half day. Well, half a day, it's no day. Let's make it definite. At seven? Perhaps. Goodbye. Till seven? Where are you going at this hour? I have some shopping to do. I'll be back around noon. two weeks overdue. What about the money you were expecting? I've been trying to get in touch with San Salvador for weeks. Afraid this guy that owes me all that money has gone bankrupt. His business phone's been disconnected. What are you going to do? I don't know. All I have left is a couple of hundred dollars. From the way you talk, I don't know whether to believe all this business talk of yours. Does this mean I'm not going to be able to leave Don for good? Well, the way things look right now, we'll just have to wait a while. But I'll work something out. I think there's an angle. Didn't I see your angle with you last night? Having a drink with you? Not that one. Friends of Bancroft, man. Oh. So that's it. I had an idea you were playing up to that dame. You two-timing no good. And on top of it, you don't even try to hide it. Carrying on an affair with another woman right under my nose. Well, you're not going to do it. And what's more, I think you're a phony. And I was ready to leave my husband for what? For a big bluff like you. You know, you're very beautiful when you get mad. But look, stupid. No other woman means a thing to me. If you don't know it now, you never will. Just think for a moment. An opportunity like this knocks only once. And I know when to open the door. Don't you agree it'd be more profitable for me to get a bit involved with this rich widow? Say for a couple of millions? So that you and I can do the things the way we plan. All it'll take is a little time. And a little front money. She must be an awful fool. Why? The fool for a guy like you. She must be as big a fool as I am. 
Coming. Who can be in such a hurry? Hey, guess what? Huh? This one's mine. From Ricardo de Villa, the gentleman we met in the lobby. He just won't give up. Until dinner, what does he mean? After making a date with Dr. Kirk, you didn't make a date with him, did you? Not exactly, but don't you think he's handsome, dashing, and, <laughs> and persistent? Well, he's certainly persistent. You know, Marsha, I'd have uh, dropped both earrings if I'd seen him first. You would. You got your pills in your purse? Oh, pills, pills. I don't want to be carrying bottles along with me. I'll tell the doctor. <sighs> Dr. Kirk, take away a stethoscope, and what have you got? Hello? Oh, oh, you can't. Well, of course we understand. Oh, that'll be fine. Yes, we'll wait for you in the dining room. Goodbye. Peter, I, I mean Dr. Kirk, he, he can't meet us for dinner. He'll pick us up in time for the show, though. Amazing how these men can make such lavish plans and then weasel out. Lucky I have a spare. Uh, hello, Mr. De Villiers' room, please. <laughs> thank you. Coffee? Uh, no, thank you. I'm not allowed to have coffee. No coffee, no alcohol. That's right. Plain ginger ale with mineral water for a chaser. Doctor's order. And the doctor's watchdog. As I was saying, it's a matter of preference. Some people are excited by abstracts. I, for one, like more definition than paintings. How about you? Frankly, I've become petrified whenever the subject of painting comes up. Why? Because I'm so ignorant about oh. it. But, Val, you have lovely taste. I, uh, don't suppose you could teach me some of the fine points. I certainly can teach you, I promise. In fact, by the time you leave California, you'll be a connoisseur. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Kirk. Oh, Dr. Kirk, Mr. DeVille. How do you do? Oh, please don't bother. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm late, but if we're going to make the curtain, we'd better hurry. Oh, well, uh, couldn't we get another ticket? I think we could. Well, what show is it? The Tales of Hoffman. It's a good show. Fine music. I've seen it. Well, uh, why don't we skip it? Who wants to go out in the smog anyway? Now, that's intelligent. Valerie. You two run along. Well, have a nice evening. See you later. Don't forget, no late hours. Bye. Good night. Bye. He sounds like he is your doctor. Well, he is, but he, uh, he was only kidding. I am supposed to take it a little easy, though. You know, um, you look like the outdoor type. I am. I go in for polo, tennis, skin diving, fishing, boating. Very exciting. I've always been more of a land lover, city slicker. Well, that's not bad either. I've been off the leash since we left New York. Well, this town is full of excitement. What are we waiting for? Waiter, check, please. There's no sense blaming yourself. I shouldn't have left her. Well, one night won't matter too much. I had no right letting her out of my sight. Well, they naturally forget the hour. After all, she's a young, attractive widow in new surroundings and... Mr. Villa, though, seems very charming. <laughs> we had time for one more. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Two o'clock. Well, You're right, it's late, quite late. I'll bet you forgot your medicine. You lose. At 11 precisely. Have a good time, dear? Oh, yes, it was an excellent show. Well, now that everybody's checked in, I guess that we... Well, uh, why don't we all have a nightcap? I think the doctor's right. Bedtime. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Uh, good night, Mr. Devere. Good night, Good night, dear. All right, Mrs. Bancroft, you've had your night out. I hope you're not going to make a practice of keeping such late hours. And in my humble opinion, Mr. Devere is too stimulating a companion for you. I'll find out. I'm uh, going to the races with him tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Well, I'd better be going, too. Good night, Mark. <laughs>
California. Why have you stayed so close to New York all your life? I like New York. And you say you go to Central America often? Business? Yes, but I have excellent people operating my branches. I export automobiles. Right now, things are a little quiet. That's the reason I have plenty of time on my hands. Feel well? Oh, I'm fine. Please. I think we'd better go back to the hotel. All right. It's late. You, you better not come in. Are you sure you're all right, darling? I'm fine, darling. The dance floor was too jammed. I just needed some air, that's all. Good night, Valerie. Good She should know the truth about her condition. You promised you wouldn't tell her. But it's my responsibility to see that she doesn't destroy herself. I know, but... I'll see to it it doesn't happen again. Well, all right for now. Give her a capsule when she wakes up, and I'll be here first thing in the morning. Good night, Marcia. Good night. Surprise. Come right in. I have something very important I want to talk to you about, Mr. DeVia. Why so far, Ma Marcia? Miss Jordan. Valerie collapsed last night after you left. What do you mean? It's her heart. Couldn't you see the signs? Medication every four hours, no alcohol or condiments, the doctor's constant attention. I didn't realize. I'd never heard Valerie not knowing me. She. She's too important to me. Is there anything I can do? Yes. The first thing you can do is, is let her rest. Don't even try to see her until she's stronger. You make it sound like Valerie's illness is my fault. No, but if she gets worse, it will be. I'll do anything you say, Marcia. Thanks, Rick.
Hi, Rick. Wait a minute. What's the matter? You have to come here now. I have some money for you. Yeah? Where'd you get it? I pawned the bracelet. I'm sorry, Fitzy. Is that all you have to say? No. I'm mad about you. That girl outside spells trouble. I've got to do something about it. Give me the bank cross suite, please. He's a nice enough chap. I just saw that dancer going into his room. Which only proves he's very much in demand. Which only proves he's no good for Valerie. Come on, let's go see her. Of course, I insist, Ricky. Just come on up. So you're back from your errand of mercy. Why did you tell Ricky he was to blame for my illness? I didn't tell him. I don't want people meddling in my affairs. Do you consider me just people, Valerie? Are you going to let a fellow that you, you've only just met cause a misunderstanding between us? Well, I want you to know that Rick and I mean a lot to each other. Oh, Valerie, be sensible. Can't you see that... Well, it's obvious he's, he's only... Go ahead. He's only after your money. You've said enough. You've interfered in my affairs for the last time. You, you can pack your things and get out. Valerie, uh, what Marcia did was only for your own good. And I've had enough interference from you, too. I'm going to tell you about your condition. No, Peter, you promised. I've never approved of keeping the truth from my patients. In your case, I agreed not to tell you because Dr. Harrison and Marsh insisted. The truth is, your heart can't stand the strain you're putting on it. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't recover from another attack. But if I take care of myself? How long? Tell me. It's hard to say. How long? Maybe a year. It, it depends. I hope you understand now that Marcia was only... Of course. Forgive me, Marcia. I, I didn't know. It's all right. It's a shock, but, but I'll get used to the idea. Well, everyone has to die sometime. I'll, I'll just die a little sooner than most people. I couldn't marry a man that wanted me just for my money, but I know it's different with Rick. And besides, he's comfortable on his own. You know, Marsha, I've never really had a break in spite of all the men around me. My first marriage didn't pan out, and then the tragedy of the second try, but now, well, well he's so different from anyone I've ever known. Yeah. Of course, Ricky. Come on in. What's the matter? What's wrong? Peter just gave me some bad news. I, I haven't long to live. Don't be ridiculous, darling. Ricky, I want to live. I want to live with you. Fritzy, I'm glad you waited. Got some good news. Pour yourself one. It worked. And get this, she proposed. Well, I guess that's it. And I suppose you'll tell me you're going to divorce her the very next day. Not the next day. And I won't last too long. And listen, she hasn't long lived. A matter of months. A bum heart. She told me so herself. What are you going to think of me? I tell you, baby, it's the truth. Maybe the whole thing's a lie. Maybe she was just trying to get your sympathy. No, no, the doctor was right there. Don't you see? This is our big chance. Why can't we go away now? Before you met her, you wanted me to go away with you. It's a good thing we didn't. I'd never met her. Where's your business sense? Well, if what you say is true, you're right. 
I hate to go on living with Don all this time. I know, baby. But I can't afford to have you leaving yet. Like he really loves her? Well, she loves him. Sometimes he sounds convincing, and then other times I'm sure he's just after her money. Oh, I don't know. I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. Imagination can do funny things. Intuition. That's true. That constant running around wore Valerie's health down, but now that they're married, I think he'll take good care of her. Well, I might as well go back to New York. Valerie won't be needing me now. Miss Marcia Jordan? Right here. There's a long-distance call. Hawaii. Oh, that must be Valerie. You can take it right here. There you are. Thank you, sir. Hello? Valerie, darling, how are you? Oh, how wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad for you. Yes, I'm fine. What? But that's impossible. They should be in the bottom drawer of your trunk. I put them there myself. She doesn't have her pills. We'll put some on the first plane. We'll put some on the first plane. Yes, he's here with me. Well, yes, I, I'm sure I can find a place. Yes, uh-huh. Where are you staying? Fine. Fine, and give my best to Rick, will you? Goodbye, dear. We better hurry. We've got about an hour to make the airport. Oh, she sounds very happy. I'm sure I packed those pills. She wants me to rent a house and engage some servants. I must remember to call Mr. Winthrop. Who's Mr. Winthrop? He's the chairman of the board of Van Gogh Enterprises. She wants him to send her some money. Hi, dear. Good morning, darling. Enjoying your breakfast? Where'd you disappear to? I was strolling around town. Oh, I brought you the morning paper. This must be your medicine. That Marcia, she thinks of everything. And I'll take care of these so you don't misplace them. Oh, I brought you something. Look here. Pretty? Pill box. Oh, Rick, how practical. It's small enough for me to carry in my pocket. You do think of everything. Oh, I almost forgot. We have that date at the art dealers. I'll change as soon as I finish breakfast. I'll put these in the medicine cap. Got something.
You know, it's a good thing I brought those pills. Or you'd never take them. You're right, darling. I wouldn't. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, thank you. The exhibit has been two Spaniards for Mrs. Delia. If I had known, I could have brought a few paintings over. I'm fine. You sure do? Mm-hmm. Ah, I see Madame fancy this painting by Reuter. He calls this one outdoor. Reuter? Hmm. Good technique. I saw some of his early work. In Paris? No, in Buenos Aires. He's becoming very popular now. I wish he would paint more. You see, it is very rare that we get a... Bright and cheerful and... And you know, Rick, it feels like outdoors. Do you mind if we discuss this? Of course not. Come down. You must never show enthusiasm to an art dealer. No? If he knows you like something, he'll double the price. Are you really fond of it? Yes. Then let me handle it. You sit down. I'll see what I can do. I will have that picture sent to you. Be all right? Be pardon me, madam. Well, what can I do for you, sir? What are you asking for the Reuter? The Reuter? Let's see, the Reuter. The Reuter. $2,500. Ridiculous. $2,000. Four thousand. Four thousand? I don't understand. Two thousand for you and two thousand for me. Welcome home. This is William. Hello. How's oh, well? would you help John with the bags? Yes, ma'am. Oh, it's wonderful, Marcia. And, and wait till you see the magnificent paintings we bought. They'll look nice in here. Oh, there's a downstairs bedroom. But it's very comfortable. Would you like to freshen up? Fine. You go ahead, darling. I'll call the hotel to see if there's any mail. Uh, where's the phone? Oh, right there. Ricardo de Villa. Is there any mail for me? Thank you. Oh, would you connect me with room 811, please? Fritzy? I'm back. Look, I can't talk now, but I'll get in touch with you as soon as I can. I love you. Of course. Goodbye, baby. You got a pill box. Rick got it for me in Hawaii, and it's small enough for him to slip into his coat pocket. Well, I'm going to fill it for you. I'm glad he's in charge of it. You always hated to carry them. You know it's been over two months since we've seen each other. How are you, Valerie? Good, really good. Are you happy? Yes, he's wonderful. Tell me, how's Peter? Oh, I've been seeing quite a bit of him. He's coming over to give you a checkup this afternoon. I'd like to ask him to tea. Fine. Okay. Pardon me. I'm going to the hotel to pick up my car and my mail. Well, darling, why don't we get our things in order first? Peter's coming over, and, and then you can drop me at the hairdressers at the hotel. Well, don't you two want to see the rest of the house? Of course. You know, Rick spent practically every minute skin diving. And he's good, too. He must have agreed with you. You look wonderful. I do feel good. 
Thanks to Rick's wonderful care. Three o'clock, Val. Good girl. You don't forget either. Thank you. Oh, Peter. I almost forgot. We'll be late for our appointment. Appointment? Yes, don't you remember? In Santa Monica. Oh. Uh, uh, excuse us, please. See you later. Bye. Darling, aren't we going to leave for the hotel now? Oh, yes. I, I almost forgot that. Bicarbonate of soda. I knew it. I filled that pill box. When I opened it later, there were only three capsules left. Operator, get me the police. Are you sure that capsule didn't get in with the others by mistake? Hello, uh, homicide, please. John Fulmer. He's trying to kill her. He... John? Peter Kirk. Uh, fine, how are you? Say, uh, John, I've got a problem up here. I wish you could help me out. Thank you, Mary. Well, they're not home yet. Follow me. John? John, look at there. Whose gun is this? Oh, that's Valerie. She always keeps it nearby. Here they are. This is her prescription. But it can't be. That's the real thing. But the first capsule I took, that was a fake. You know it, Peter. You, you tested it yourself. Miss Jordan, are you sure? Quite sure you got that capsule out of this bottle? Well, I got it out of the pill box, but I filled it from this, this bottle. Where is the pill box? Well, I guess it's in Rick's pocket. He usually carries it when they go out. Well, the point now is to get that pillbox. We better get out of here. They're back. I'll introduce you as Dr. Fulmer. Good. Peter must be here. I saw his car outside. Valerie? Hi, Thanks. Peter. Hi. Hi. You're home early. Isn't it a shame I made the trip in vain? The hairdresser didn't show up. Uh, Dr. Fulmer and Mr. Mrs. Avia. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. How do you do? Uh, I'll take that. All right. Peter, you're staying for dinner. And, Doctor, won't you join us? No, thank you. I promised the missus that I'd have dinner you with You said her. you were going to have dinner with me tonight. I'm sorry. Oh, it, it must have fallen out. Well, you two make any plans you like. Peter's not getting out of having dinner with me. This is the real thing, I'm sure of it. Well, if I hurry, I can still take the missus out shopping. You're not going. Obviously, you made a mistake. But he must have changed the pill somehow. We cannot proceed on assumption. You're not going to do anything, anything at all? Sorry. We have to have something more concrete to go on. Goodbye, miss. I'll see you, Peter. Goodbye, John. Thanks. I suppose you think I'm crazy, too. You should appreciate Fulmer's position. Rick is depriving her of the medicine, the very thing that's keeping her going. Don't be reasonable, Marcia. There's been no crime committed. What about the other pill, the bicarbonate of soda? You're just going to wait until a crime is committed, is that it? I wish I could say this was a surprise. 
Well, I, uh, I just stopped by. I forgot something. An umbrella. I was going to our old room to see the maid. Do you usually leave the elevator on the floor below? Well... Uh, this is the fifth floor. You were in 607. Oh. Going down? talking about a tour to South America. Stalin. I saw your wife in the beauty parlor. She looked very good to me. Maybe on the outside. I know how sick she is. I was thinking, suppose the whole thing boomerangs. I've heard of people recovering from heart ailments. Impossible. I wish I could believe you. This is a ticket, baby. I can't begin to tell you how much dough this dame's got. Better get back in the bot on. Be careful. I can't afford to have anyone suspect us now. Not the way things are going. When am I going to see you? I'll get in touch with you as soon as I can call. Suppose Rick is having an affair. Suppose he is after Valerie's money. What difference does it make? Look how she's improved since she's been married. I gave her a checkup yesterday and she's fine. Marcia, the police know as much about Rick as you do. Fulmer told me that Rick was an agent for some distributor south of the border. He hasn't a dime and he hasn't a police record. Well, that may be true, but I, I still think something's wrong. He's up to no good. Well, if you won't help me and Fulmer won't help me, I'm going back to New York. You can't do that. I can and I will. Marsha would be abandoning two people who need you. Oh, Peter, what am I going to do? Don't give up. Just keep on trying. Okay, so you beat me again. Huh? Your turn next time. <laughs> playing tennis. I have. I tried to talk her out of it. He hadn't kept lobbing the ball over my head, I'd have beaten him, too. <laughs> no excuses. You missed all the easy ones. Well, I give up. What are you doing? Nothing. Are you sleepy? Well, not really. Why? Oh, I thought we might drop in at LaRue's. But, Rick, it must be midnight. It's just the right time to do a couple of spots. I can't sleep. I'm going out and get a drink. Darling, you know I won't let you go alone. Rick, it was a wonderful idea. You know, it's nearly closing time. Well, I refuse to budge till you buy me a nightcap. Waiter, waiter. Two stingers, please. Why must Arnest live in the most inaccessible parts of town? Atmosphere. Pearson, you must go to Pearson. Well, we've come this far. We're not going back without a painting. Rick, are we almost 
Are you crazy? Well, I do want them to hang right. Darling, you shouldn't. Well, I promised Rick I'd hang them just the way he wants them. But you shouldn't be hopping about like this. Good morning. Check Good up, darling. Good morning, Dolly. Peter. Ah. Peter the doctor. What's going on here? I try to hang one little picture and Marcia starts giving me a bad time. Be a dear and take her away, will you? Come on. Okay. Certainly it's good news, Peter. I'm sorry I have to be leaving. Oh, Peter, your glasses. Oh. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Rick. Good morning, Doctor. Well, I've got some good news for you. Yeah? I just examined Valerie, and her condition now is better than it was when she first came here. Well, I told you I'd take good care of her. <laughs> I suppose the only explanation is that Psychologically, she's happy, and that, of course, is due to you. Well, thank you. But let's not minimize your contribution. Well, that's the amazing thing. In spite of disobeying all my orders, she's... What do you mean? Oh, I know she's been having an occasional drink, keeping late hours, doing things she shouldn't do. Yeah? You know, very often, a person's will to live, change of environment... I don't know what's happened to Valerie, but whatever it is, it's for her benefit. Rick, if you'll be firm with her and see that she doesn't cheat too much, you'll have a healthy girl on your hands. Well, thanks, Peter. I'll take good care of her. I'm glad you told me about her. Believe me, I'll take good care of her. I know you will. See you later, Rick. Aren't you going to take me to the station? No, I can't. I have something to do. Take a cab. around here. 
Please, Rick, why take it out on Marcia? She's my friend. She's being paid, isn't she? What's come over you, darling? What's troubling you? I'd just like to have the house to myself for a change. Don't wait up for me and send her away. I want her out of here by morning. Thank Marcia. Could I have some water? Now, just sit still, dear. I just got here. Let's have the stuff. Where's the ashtray? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Give me the glasses. Here are the doorknobs. I had a job getting them off with my nail file. These are the inside knobs, aren't they? Sure, just like you said. Right. Okay. Oh, and here's the duplicate key to my room. Fifteen. Oh, look. Take my tie. And hang it in your closet. Now remember, when they question you, I was with you till two in the morning. Let them break you down little by little. And once you admit I was with you, Stick to your story. And just follow this lane. It'll take you right back to the highway. Be careful, baby.
Williams. What's the matter? What are you doing here at this hour? Sit down, Mr. DeVere. What's wrong? Where were you tonight? Why do you want to know, Doctor? Not Doctor, Mr. DeVere. Detective Sergeant John Fulmer, homicide. Homicide? Where's Valerie? Is she awake? No. She's not awake. Well, what are the police doing here? Valerie's dead. Dead? What are you talking about? You want to know you killed her. Have you lost your mind? You stay here. The coroner is with her. But when? How did it happen? You're not fooling us. You... You... Do I have to stand here and listen to this? This woman has been interfering with my life for weeks, with her suspicions and constant nagging. Miss Jordan, circumstances indicate suicide. You put the gun in her hand to make it look like suicide. Now, well, hold up a minute, Miss Jordan. You'd better wait here until the coroner makes his report. In a way, I don't blame her, Sergeant. I'm not proud of what I did tonight. If only I hadn't quarreled with Valerie. Yes, we quarreled. My nerves were shot. Well, I even picked on little things. I picked on Marcia. I ended up shouting and raving like a maniac. We'd never been angry with each other before, never. Valerie took it hard. Marcia will tell you that. She wasn't considering suicide. I know it. Valerie was a very happy woman. It's hard to believe she'd take her own life. Of course, it doesn't make sense. Can't you see that, Sergeant? We are going to investigate every aspect of this case. Mr. DeVere, where were you tonight? I was a hundred miles away. In Palm Springs. Where in Palm Springs? At the Three Palms Motel. And what were you doing there? It's a little embarrassing, you see. There's, there's another person involved. A lady. I'm sure a gentleman would keep his lips buttoned. But in a case like this, I'm certain that you'll cooperate and help us get to the bottom of things. Of course. I hope this information will be handled with discretion. Of course. I was with Mrs. Darvell. The police aren't going to believe any alibi that woman gives. Now, Miss Jordan, relax, please. I tried to break it off, but Fitzy wouldn't let me. She needed money. She threatened to tell Valerie if I didn't give it to her. Did anyone see you there? Besides Mrs. Darvell, I mean. I don't know. I'm not sure. I had a couple of drinks while I was there. My tie. The tie I was wearing. I must have forgotten it. I must have left it there. The key. Silly habit of mine always walking off with the hotel keys. Cabin 15. He's lying. And that stuff about blackmail. His affair with that dancer didn't end when he married Valerie. Not then or later. He killed her. I, I know it. Take it easy, Marcia. If you spent the evening in Palm Springs, it doesn't matter why you went there. Digging into it would only cause scandal. Yes, Doctor? Something, what did you find? Something rather curious, Sergeant. The cause of death, pulmonary embolism, as a result of a heart attack. Heart attack? Died about 10 o'clock. Perhaps a little earlier, a little later. Hard to say exactly. Shot after her heart had stopped beating. Peter! This is terrible. You mean she was dead when that shot was fired? No question about it. The shot was fired into a corpse. Well, see you later at headquarters, Sergeant. Now we know it couldn't have been suicide. Whoever wanted to kill her didn't know she was already dead. I'm perfectly willing to do anything you say. But what can you do if you prove someone shot? Can anyone be held for murder? Can anyone be sent to the gas chamber for shooting a corpse? You can't let him get away with this. Whoever fired that shot can't be held for murder. Of that I'm certain. Is this the DeVia residence? Yes, sir. Excuse me. How long have you been here, Sergeant? Well, I've been here for hours. But the flash just came through. Flash? What flash? About Ricardo DeVia. He lives here, doesn't he? 
Yes, he's in there now. Has he confessed? No, he claims he was in Palm Springs. We're checking on his alibi, of course. He claims he was in Palm Springs? Mr. DeVere, what was the name of that motel in Palm Springs? Do I have to go through that again? You've got the key, you can read. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, cabin 15, Three Palms Motel. That's it, Sergeant. Well, you weren't lying. Your fingerprints are all over the place. I thought we'd settle this thing. Let me have the tie, Frank. Is this the tie you left in Mrs. Darvell's cabin? That's it. Thank you. Let's go. Go? Go where? To headquarters. You're being booked for murder. What are you talking about? My wife died a natural death. You know that. And I was in Palm Springs, a hundred miles away. You know that, too. That's correct, Mr. DeVere. That's why we're taking you along. You admitted Mrs. Darvell was blackmailing you. Yes. Then we'd better get along. Or do you want to confess here? Confess? Confess what? To the murder of Fritzy Darvell. Fritzy Darvell? That's impossible. Fritzy couldn't have been murdered. She was found strangled in cabin 15, Three Palms Motel in Palm Springs. Wait a minute. Listen. I didn't kill her. I wasn't even with her. Believe me, Fulmer, I can explain everything. You've already explained. No, no. That was just an alibi. I can tell you who killed Fritzy, though. It was her husband. She left him. He was jealous. He threatened to kill her. Bring him in. Make him talk. We can't do that. He was in an automobile accident about an hour ago. He died on the way to the hospital. But if he's dead, how can I... Homer, you're not going to charge me with a murder I didn't commit. Let's go. Thank you. 